Hello, my name is Jim Park. Today's video is a part of the video series covering four key components of tissue culturing. Today, I will focus on cell passaging part of the overall workflow. Today, I would like to share some of the key watchouts and considerations that should go into passaging of adherent cells. Cell passaging is also known as subculturing or splitting. And simply put, it is an activity where a fraction of cells is harvested and transferred into the new vessel for further culturing. While we'll not go into specific details of aseptic techniques, all standard aseptic techniques, such as the use of biohood and sterile reagents should be practiced while performing these tasks. Let's start by talking about cell density and confluency. In general, typical in vitro cellular growth within a vessel, such as a tissue culture flask, will follow a sigmoid pattern of proliferation. A typical growth curve is shown here. Cell numbers are plotted on y-axis. Culturing time is plotted on x-axis. Blue line indicates overall growth. Initial phase is characterized as a lag phase where cells are adjusting to new microenvironment and exhibit no or very little growth. These cells will then enter logarithmic growth phase as they start to actively proliferate. For majority of the functional assays, it is recommended that cells are harvested at this phase and used for experiments. This phase is also optimal for determining the doubling time of a given cell type. Also for passaging cells, late-stage log phase is commonly used. Later phases are characterized by stationary growth and eventual population decline due to cell death. You should not be passaging or using cells for experiments from these phases unless there are specific reasons to do so related to your specific experimental needs. Now let's cover the concept of confluency, which simply refers to percentage of surface covered by adherent cells. In general, cells are passaged when they reach around 80% confluency. Before passaging cells, please ensure that cells are healthy and there are no signs of contamination, as discussed in the previous video. Prepare appropriate culture media and dissociation reagent by bringing them to 37 degrees Celsius. Do not leave media in biohood for longer than is necessary as the media components will degrade over time. Place the flask in biohood. Remove the media and gently wash the cell monolayer with room temperature PBS or HPSS. Carefully add PBS to side of the flask as to not to forcefully dislodge adherent cells. Wash with PBS or HPSS without calcium and magnesium as this salt can inhibit cell dissociation reagents. Remove the PBS using sterile serological pipette and add pre-warmed dissociation reagent to the flask to cover the cells. Gently tilt the flask back and forth to evenly distribute the trypsin to cover the cells. Normally use 5 ml trypsin for T75 flask. This volume can be scaled up or down according to size and the surface area of the vessel. Place in 37 degrees Celsius tissue culture incubator for 2 to 10 minutes. Check flask frequently under the microscope to ensure that the greater than 90% of the cells have dissociated from flask surface. Trypsinization can be toxic to some cells, so check flask frequently, and as soon as greater than 90% of cells has been detached, neutralize trypsin. You can also tap the vessel to help cell detachment. When greater than 90% of cells are detached, put the flask in standing position and neutralize the dissociation reagent with serum containing medium appropriate to the cell line in culture. Usually 1x trypsin volume equivalent is sufficient to neutralize trypsin. Gently pipe it up and down to break any cellular clumps. Examine the flask under microscope to ensure a single cell suspension has been achieved. In some cases, it may be difficult to obtain single cell suspension depending on cell type. In such cases, it will be difficult to obtain accurate cell counts. 
Often it is necessary to pipette cells up and down gently to create single cell suspension. Transfer cell suspension to a conical tube and centrifuge for 3 minutes at 300 G. Centrifugation condition will vary for different cell types. Discard the supernatant and gently resuspend cell pellet to a suitable volume for counting. For applications requiring set seating density or new cell lines where growth rate need to be characterized, count cells and transfer required number of cells to a new labeled flask with pre-warmed medium. Make sure to write down the passage number, which indicates the number of times the cell line has been passaged. It is also good practice to write down the initial seating density. This will help scientists determine the growth rate of the given cell type. For routine passage of cell lines with a known growth rate, it is not necessary to count cells. One can simply use a split ratio when passaging. For example, 1 to 5 split means 20% of the final cell suspension after trypsin neutralization has been transferred to a new same size flask to create newly passaged cells. Or in other words, cells from the original flask has been split into five equal size flasks. Typical split ratio is between 1 to 3 and 1 to 8, depending on cell type and experimental need. Now you have it. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please leave any comments below, but also check our website. Thank you.